Cool. So I'm super excited about this. Um, start it. We, we, I'm not going to trash Jenkins at all. Please stay tuned. Okay. This is more provocation than anything else. Um, because I want to kind of start with telling a story. Then I'm going to talk a bit about the way CI/CD actually works around the industry, what the market has to offer, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to do a bit of the journey, how life is really hard, they have kind of everything works on our machines, but actually in real life no, nothing works as we expect. And then we're also going to talk about a different approach of doing things, okay? Uh, and look on a positive manner, how we can like, get our team to release faster. So, so we're going to talk about a bit how things are really smooth when we start because everything is roses, we can build code, deploy, and it's really nice arena, everything goes fine, and we go to the phase where things start to get really alien because then some guy says you need to be compliant, you need to manage your security properly, your key management, and you need to integrate A, B, or C, and you get to, you got to, you get to dive in really strange parts and because things become alien, and at some point, everything is on fire, you're going to hate your life, and you think this thing is really hard to do because you have other requirements, other things come up with, and at the very end, you get really massive monstrosity uh, if you've caught, if we fall in some of the scenes that normally a majority of companies go through. So I'm going to tell a story, uh, a bit about me first. Uh, I'm a bass player, software engineer, architect. Mostly my time, I write code, which is the stuff I like to do. I also like a lot to interact with people, go to teams, understand what they're doing, see what, what their struggles are and see how I can make those li that life better. I'm also a father, two girls, I cycle, and I love nature in general. So I, like, I do my free time. That's my Twitter handle, and I work in Vonage um, in Basingstoke, UK. So before I, we actually start, I'd like to know a bit about what you guys do. So anyone here uh, knows what doesn't know what CIC is? Good. Oh, yeah. Probably she knows. Probably she knows. <laughs> Uh, anyone here using Jenkins on their daily uh, life as a developer engineer? Okay. Anyone? Travis? Bamboo? Circle CI? Okay. Cool. How many times do you guys deploy? Anyone doing daily deploys on your team to production? Cool. I'm one of them as well. Anyone doing weekly deploys to production? Anyone doing monthly deploys? Okay. Anyone doing more than a monthly rate deploys to production? Okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's some some businesses and some part of the industry still require that kind of cycle. It's fine. It's not. Don't be ashamed of that. I feel sorry for you, but don't be ashamed. <laughs> um, okay. So let's remind ourselves what all CI/CD and continuous integration uh, is all about. I'm very. I'm. I'm going to be most focused focused on. In continuous integration at this point, but let's remind ourselves what it's all about. At the very end, what we want is we don't want to break things. When we change things, the ones we control, we can break stuff, and, and most of them we will do it a lot of the time. But then the other other things we don't control that are also changing. So we need to continuously try to understand what those variables are. So that at the very uh, Basically, we just want to get software out to customers. And it might not be the perfect software, the right software. We want to get feedback on a secure manner. Uh, you might not have a finished feature, but it needs to be kind of deployed securely, not leaking data, should have metrics and logging, so understand the feedback, what's happening, and get some context. But ultimately, that we want. We want to provide developers, engineers, any spectrum of either development, customer-facing applications, services, or even operations infrastructure, side of infrastructure, we want to be able to change, get feedback as quick as possible, fail fast, recover fast. We are going to fail. Sorry, there is no perfect solution. We are going to fail. So, on my team, where I'm part of, um, so I came from the background of software engineering, now I moved to automation engineering, is we have this, we have this saying about yuck shaving. So yuck is a massive, it's like a cow kind of thing, with a lot of air and it's really hard to shave. I don't believe anyone tried. But it's all about, this, this came from uh, Carlin Berry some years back. I think it's American, most certainly. The name doesn't look American, but it's actually American. It's all about, regardless of whatever you need to do on a job, 
to get stuff done, there are always a bit more to do. Uh, those bits are small, those additional checks, those additional bits of documentation, etc., etc. And, they, and sometimes you can't move to the next task until you finish the other bit. And sometimes these are not pleasant. So you all might even call this yak shaving. Sure, we finished the feature, but we still have some yak shaving to do. So I kind of teased my daughter, and I want to tell you a story. And can, because this is like the team we use on a team, can you create a character? So this is Dave, OK? It's a yak. I, I'm not using human because I don't want to offend any Daves that are human. So this is basically a humanized yak. So this is like the character for today. That character might be me, might be you, might be someone else. Uh, and this, so I, I will, the story I'm going to tell now is, is an accumulation of, of a research I did for one year and a half, also part of my experience, obviously, but mostly trying to learn what other companies are doing on the space, what's happening on the spectrum, like big players like Walmart Labs in the US, uh, Pivotal, that great Concourse CI, and other companies that they shifted from their product offering and they had some, some of them added, ended up building cloud-based CRCD solutions because they actually built something really cool and they made it that as a business or they open sourced. Okay? So basically, this is Dave's typical story is they've joined a company that was small. They have 15 people there. Wow, what could go wrong? They released every six months. Uh, everyone was building the code on their machines. In most cases, because they are like a few number of customers, it sounds familiar probably to some of you, it was fine. Everything went really cool. And sometimes some guy went on holiday and there's some folder that has binary that the guy compiled manually and the build on the other machine doesn't work, that's fine. We can wait for more weeks and we deploy. That's fine, it's not urgent. But then the company starts to grow and they had to try to find a way to get stuff to customers faster. Uh, and then they're trying to find a guy to hire and then they came out. Dave was really good doing batch scripting, and he knew a bit of Perl, and he kind of was familiar with POSIX, and, and he even knew a bit about Windows. So the company thought, this guy is the right fit. And the guy had good ideas. He kind of heard about some tools he would like to play with. One of them was Hudson, which is what we know as Jenkins today. Hudson came out in 2004, and Jenkins was launched actually in 2011. So you know, Jenkins is not that old. Well, it looks like an old guy, but he's, anyway. So, so he landed on this job, he had great ideas. So what happens is, when, Jim, when, when basically Dave got to the company, he saw what was happening, so you guys in the build system. And that's what they want, they want some guy with ideas to make sure they could have a better competitive <laughs> process and to that aspect that one of the guy's machine run on a place where they could, one the, once a day, build the code. That wasn't as good for them, that was perfect. So, Basically, as James, uh, as well as Dave, start to go to the to the understanding of how the, the teams work there, the guy start to come up with creative ideas. Could have so the guy knew Bash, right? What could possibly go wrong? He can do everything in Bash, right? So he became suddenly the camera star. So, so everyone that needs somehow, they got a solution. He can, I can script that all the time. He just the guy really literally solved all the problems. So he became a rock star. But well, one day, he had some great idea. What if we start using some plugins to make things better? Oh, that was an excellent idea, Dave. Just continue that. So the guy started introducing really cool stuff. We could visualize some of the pipelines and do all the fancy stuff. But Dave actually was doing something interesting. He was literally, every time he had to change and shift the system, he went, he went right to the box. And because at the time, no one knew what Terraform was, what Fisher-class code was, and that stuff didn't exist. Okay, so basically, the community came up with great ideas. Let's let's just install plugins. Let's just oh I, oh there's a plugin that does this. Let's use it. Okay, so Dave built this, continued to build this system, solving all his teammates' problems, and it was an amazing guy. Everyone, and then one day he had an idea. What if oh come on, I really need to start templating some bits. So Dave kind of said, oh I don't like Groovy that much. The Groovy, by the way, is kind of the the language used to build, to basically try to represent pipelines internally in Jenkins. There are other ways and other things today, but I, I don't like Ruby that much. I'm a Bash guy. We just continue to use Bash build because everyone knows Bash, right? And the company was like a Java-based company, but anyone can go to that thing and just learn if you need to. So we basically started building his own thing. The reality is that 
two years later, Dave just start cursing Jenkins because he started to realize that what he built was really hard. And he started to realize that he couldn't have built Jenkins anymore because some guy created two or three pipelines that require that plugin. That plugin that only works on that version they had installed and he couldn't migrate anything else. So his Jenkins stack starts to get stale. And basically, Dave's wife and his team, and he even got a team because, well, well done. that thing is huge now. They need someone to help. And basically, fighting the CI CD system issues where they BAU. Literally, every day they try to fight that. So, Dave is really sad. Dave's friends are really sad. They have their best intentions. They really want to solve problems that generally are important to solve. Uh, we, they're willing to be proactive and helping the team out to get their job done, they disregard the fundamental principle of creating an, a maintainable, stable, reproducible system. And that caused all the problems of friction. Yeah. So this is sad. Everyone is super sad. So the, rea the idea is that when, when companies come to this realization on any stack, uh, people start to think about what they can do different. Uh, and we need to understand people don't do this on purpose. They are really well intended because they, in most cases, they want to serve someone else and get the job done, help, their, help others. So they realized it's time to change. And so Dave and his team get, they get come to the conclusion that, hold on, this is not working very well for us. So what we can do? And people have ideas. Some cool kids go to the company and say, oh, you know, Travis is really cool. And other tools are really cool. But Dave also has the knowledge of the intrinsic details of his company, right? because it's highly regulated or because they have specific needs around security. And, and although everything that looks really cool might not be the coolest thing. So they start to think about what he can do about it. So it's just um, obvious. We need to have a quote. I, we can either have cats or like a really epic quote. So I just choose the epic quote for now. No cats, sorry. So the reality is we're going to fail. We need to admit we need to fail, and work, what worked 10 years ago doesn't work today, or might need to be adjusted. So, let's think about today is everyone talks about the cool stuff, and the interesting we think we find in companies, and most companies find is, we always have someone that says, look, if we use this tool, we solve all our problems. Because I run that thing on my machine in Docker, and it works, so it's perfect. If I, if I made a job, surely, if I spend a few weeks, this will work in production as well all that kind of stuff. The reality is, these ideas are very valuable and important because they, are, they start the conversation. But there's a lot of few other things we need to look at to make sure you're actually getting the right thing done. So if you think about CI, CD, and tool sets, let's think about what the business has to offer today. So I'm going to basically show you guys what today, as businesses or individuals, you can buy, you can buy SaaS-based, install on premise via licenses or download open source, build your own stack. So now I just ask you a question. Anyone has an idea how many cloud-based CICD solutions exist today, currently, modern? A good number, huh? someone guess. 20. 20. Any other number? 42. 42, wow. <laughs> okay, let's talk about, let's show, let's see what's, what we have. AWS. AWS has an entire CICD stack, pretty much composed of different services. Some companies use one part, others use all of them. There's an interesting thing. You can actually get stuff re done really quickly. You can leverage IAM on a really nice manner. And it's a massive tool chain that both people have no idea Amazon does this. These are like cool, new cool tools on block. Uh, Azure has something similar to this as well, but anyway. So they have code commit, code build, code deploy, and code pipeline. Really cool stuff. Code pipeline is like the, I think it's the most expensive, or they all the, get everything together. I saw a couple of videos, I never use it. But it is there. And it's relevant if you just do Amazon. You can actually get really cool stuff done really quickly and get really good value from it. Jenkins, like Jenkins, previously known as Hudson, uh, Bro, it's not uh, it's not the first CI CD system. It's the first one that is known. But there were from around 91, 94. There was an American guy that 
define the concepts. And there were a few companies doing the stuff internally, the internal tool set, that were doing the same things already. So the, the early days, known at least, I could find reference was 1991, something like that. Then you have Jenkins X, the new magical, solves all the problems in Jenkins, Kubernetes based offering, uh, etc. AppVayer, BuildKite, uh, GoChip, Drone, Concourse CI from Pivotal Labs, it's a pretty cool tool. We use that in Vonage, you know, at least one team. I don't know what extent they use. Walmart Labs use it extensively. They have 50, around 50 Concourse CI stacks on uh, Walmart Labs. Circle CI is pretty cool. Tecton, everyone knows about Tecton? Ever heard of that? It's a Google project. Kubernetes space as well. And there are some blends between Tecton and Jenkins X. Like a monstrosity, to be fair, but it's interesting. Magnum CI, oh, that's very famous. It's modern, it's SaaS based, it's really, really interesting. Travis, I use the girl because the guys are super overused. And Shippable and Go, CIC, Cruise Control. I don't know what that is, but it is, it's actually there, you can buy it online. See, GitLab CICD is pretty awesome, uh, but I can have opinions about them. They all suck, they are all sick. <coughs> and CodeFresh and Team CT, something that Legion built recently, which is still in beta phase. I don't even remember the name, I just got the logo. Semaphore CI, it's also an interesting project. And Bitwise and Bamboo and sorry, so I don't know who that is. And that thing is Jenkins X with another rebrand of Jenkins X and Buddy. And that's it. So oh hold on. So you see this, how do you choose this? If you need to move your CI CD system to the next generation, you have all these options. Which one is right? Which one is the best? Which is the one suitable for your team? Which is the one that solves your problems? Oh, I watch a video the way Netflix does. Surely this is the way we should do it. Oh, but Spotify. Oh, Spotify model is awesome. Surely what they do is the right thing because it's so successful. That, and that is not that black and white. So, so choosing is hard. You need to choose. And you, regardless of the choice you make, you're going to regret about at some point about some details. Okay? But this is the reality. Most, a lot of these projects, they was they born because of big companies' necessity. They build their own thing. Either they open source it or they saw, hmm, let's create a business model based on CICD. And a lot of them here, probably one third, are just that. They came out as internal projects, they become commercial projects. But they are so similar these days, and they solve so many common problems the same way that it's hard, even if that is making the choice really hard. So, the real life is that we can't take six months, one year to decide what to do. That doesn't, it's not scalable, and you're going to delay to solve your problems even more. But there are also no quick, quick shortcuts, so it's not easy to find a balance what to do. The reality is, Regardless of what you make as a decision, you're always going to have the feeling going to burn money, directly either paying a vendor or because you need to spend and invest time to get something on a good state. And either of those, they will cost money. If you go SaaS, you have paid the infrastructure, you pay that service, you don't worry about a bunch of things, You've, you kind of trade off some flexibility, customization, custom, customization, etc. Then you think, oh, I'm going to be my own thing because I'm really smart. Yeah. That might be a good idea, might be the only solution because you have some constraints around security models, around, around eventual compliance, might be the case, we don't know. But basically, we have a bunch of questions and we can't figure out everything in advance. But that doesn't mean we can't um, try to get a sense of what the needs are and get some feeling about the people that have experience on the company and try to probably make a better educated guess what we want first and then start to narrow down our choices excluding things before we actually choose to commit to something and how can we do that and to fail fast because we might fail and recover from that it's hard so Jenkins is not a problem we all create these things and we just read Jenkins for those who don't know 
This anything of those brands can become a monster if you use it properly. Because based on the way you approach the problem, you're going to eventually, if you try to make the tool to make sh things the tool should, wasn't designed for, etc., or if you try to, to do things that defy the logic of the initial creation or authors of the project, you might even create another monster. So the problem is not the tool. So bear in mind that preference aside, I'm not a Jenkins fan, but I do love the tool. It's an amazing tool set. It's not my favorite solution for the CICD, but for many things we do in automations operations, it's pretty enough what we need. But it's not the tool is the issue. The, tool, the, the issue is how we approach things. So actually, it's a great tool. It is a great tool. Uh, like anything, it can be used improperly and can become a really bad, badly named thing. So bear in mind that Jenkins, Hudson was the origin of Jenkins, was my son Microsystems, if I'm not mistaken. It was launched on the year this phone was launched. This phone sold 250 million units, I think, something like that. Um, anyone want to guess what year this was? One, this? one, one six zero zero. <laughs> no, this is the, I don't know, this is like a one, yeah, it's a 1011 Nokia, okay, whatever, right. something like that. Yeah, 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 exactly. So this phone was launched in 2004, 2005. And they sold in one year to around 50 million units. And on those days, that was like selling iPhones on large scale. It was actually more successful than that. You know what I mean? This was the reality of that time. So it's been a long way, right? Everyone has smartphones, you can watch Netflix, play games, and it's more powerful than the computer. It's 10 times or 20 more powerful than the first computer I had. So, so let's, first of all, think about the requirements. And I, I didn't put this in, like, introducing one at a time on purpose. Because the reality when we think about requirements for doing anything, it's very easy to say, this requirement is the first one we look, this one is the second one we look, and it's very easy to overlook things and give less importance to some of them. But let me drill down some of these things. So you have all those options, you know your reality, but let's talk about that. So first of all, your business makes decisions based on, okay, we work on, we are like a Microsoft company, Windows only that even exists these days, I don't know. Surely some companies do that. The OS you need to support, are you, are you want to leverage Docker, moving Kubernetes eventually, with a tool chain around that. Do you want, what type of pipelines you think you need, or you actually need in your business? What kind of, do you want to go to CI, CD all in one? You want to think about starting like that, but designed to be able to scale, to move to probably specialized CD solutions, or let's say, example, using Jenkins, but you might want to move your, your continuous delivery to Spinnaker, for example, which is a, a continuous delivery tool, or any other tool, or even leverage concourse to do your continuous delivery, or trying to get the best of other tools. But how you design that, then you can ditch one of it if it doesn't work out everything for you. Uh, what are your service level ob objectives? How critical is CI, CD for your business? If you release daily, like some teams on our company do, we have teams that deploy four or five times a day, or even more, in some cases, peak time. Uh, because if you want to move towards continuous deployment, you need first to continuous integration, continuous delivery properly. And they might think, oh, this is so good and so well tested. I trust my pipeline so much. I can actually commit the code. That's what we want to be. I commit the code, my check and balance went okay. I deploy the thing for production. It runs the checks in line and it's there, live. No human, the only, the, only human, the only thing the human did was writing the code, okay? So the idea is, how critical is that? So that will define what you want based on this, because the reason this is important is because if you go to the cloud offering, they already define their SLAs, and they might not be matching your SLOs at all, or your internal SLAs for your entire stack. So you need to consider, to exclusion, look, look these, can be considered because they don't match what our demands for our customers, internal, external. Okay? And then we need to make decisions where we want to do our fact management. This is a very important critical decision. This is will allow you to scale or not. Is do I want to keep artifact management and all that inside the CI system, or I don't want to decouple and leverage something like Artifactory to be the artifact the artifact store and build log 
registry so I can actually swap your system easily. That's a very important detail. And because auditing is critical, security and compliance requirements is very critical on any business these days. So that will dictate as well uh, a lot of your choices as well. And the developer experience is probably, is not the most important thing, but is one of the most ignored, unfortunately, aspect on decision making, on, on automation. Is, yeah, developers don't need to know these details, or yeah, it just runs, that kind of thing. So we need to think how the human interacts with the system. Because ultimately, the decision we make today will impact the productivity of people and getting the code. Remember, the idea is getting code out really quickly as possible and make sure we ship code. So the reality is developer experience is like everything. If you don't build things that developers can leverage and use the tools chain immediately to get value, so you can actually deliver value and get the code out, all your effort, all your technical expertise is worthless because they can't use it. It's like customer experience is everything. If you build a product customers don't not use or it's hard to use, you lose the value. It doesn't matter if you did a brilliant technical solution under the, under the hood, there is no value. So, fundamentally today, the big challenge is we need to consider our requirements, I'll try to use data-driven decision, not guest-driven decision on this, and make sure that we choose the right battles. And, the, and, and sometimes the right solution is not to move from Jenkins to something else, or, or for your current system, A to B, is what transition steps can I do to get on a confident position? Because ultimately, what we want as an industry is a different approach. Is we need to think about CI solution, CD solution, as equally important as code. So if you run your tests on your code, and you run your code linters, your code quality checks on your, on, your, on your code that you deliver to customers, you're going to do that for your tool chain as well. Actually, your tests, and I work on teams where we actually enforce that, and my team does that, our tests we write, they run the same build as the code, the same quality, linting, all, all those kind of things. We treat the test as, as the same importance as the customer facing code that gives a, the result to the customer. So there, that means we should also think about for pipeline. So your code is testable. You want to be able to run your tests, scratch your service, go your service up. Let's treat CIC the same way. Obviously, if you go to clouds, there are other twists. But you still need to consider that the cloud vendor will patch their services, and they'll take stuff down, and they will have connectivity issues. Amazon might have a problem on some uh, ARP table somewhere in the, and the network routing doesn't work and you have downtime, you have latency you didn't expect. Things will fail, guaranteed. Okay, regardless of where you choose, things will fail. So, fundamental problem of CI CD today people complain about is because these things were not important some years back. It was about scripting things out really quickly, get results, and forgetting fundamentals, going back to the fundamentals of software engineering, which is we write testable things. Okay? So, Reproducible. If you build your own CI CD system, if you think rebuilding your CI CD swapping, make sure you can tear that thing down completely, turn back up again, and it still works with the same data, and the build jobs just work, and your pipelines just simply work. And that's what we want to do with everything these days in cloud. Infrastructure as code is all about that. 100% uh, configuration code driven. All the modern successful CI/CD solutions. GitLab made that their kind of prime thing uh, these days. They're very good. I remember using GitLab where you had to like, spend two hours to install and run commands to get that running. But today's a good example of a CI/CD system. The part that does the CI/CD is very good. Everything is code-driven. You can just commit a file and you, you have an audit trail. Nothing better than a commit to say, this was my state, this is why I did it, this might change. Treat everything as code. So, regardless of what you do, make sure your pipeline has a pipeline. Whoa, what, my pipeline is a pipeline. Like, my compiler, the early compilers, they compiled itself. It was called bootstrapping. Early days compilers, C compilers, they had the boot, assembly bootstrapping. They compiled itself and they started <coughs> compiling itself, the modules, the core modules. 
Our, our tool chain we use on my team, it builds itself. The tool, the tool chain, it renders its own configuration to build itself in the CI system. We want to move forward. This is where we want to be as a as company, as businesses, as engineers is. I can tear the entire thing down and it just works. Then I can fix something. I load the data, launch a new version. Oh, it's broken. That's a problem. Let's revert to the previous one. Let's treat CI CD as a service. And if you move to cloud-based solutions, hosted solutions, the challenges are the same. You, as you remember all those options you had? One thing you need to make sure, you guarantee with your vendor is, you need to understand how they operate. How do they, what's their patching policy? What's their patching cycle? How do they mitigate failure? How do they, how do, what happens if they need to offload their traffic to another region in AWS? If you choose to be serving AWS, you need to understand what latency that can incur, what, how that can impact key management if you don't use the IAM or whatever solution you have. All that stuff can break your entire flow. So it's very critical. Because no point of having a system running where the keys are not valid for the other cloud and nothing works because you can't do anything because simply they don't communicate. So I didn't mention, I kind of mentioned security several times. Obviously, when you build a CI CD system and you like Jenkins and you kind of, you're kind of control your own destiny, be very careful around key management. Key management and artifact management are the biggest sins that people make with Jenkins in particular. It's because it's so malleable, you can do so much cool stuff with it. Uh, and today you can run pi Jenkins pipelines as code as well. Most of it is very flexible. It's very flexible, it's more flexible than people think. The reality is, it's very easy to disregard key management and all these aspects. And then what happens is, we have stuff live with, that depends on that stack, and then we need to retrofit things, and things will break. Or an auditor will tell you, you can't do that. Okay, so it's very critical. Your CI system is the entry point of the quality of everything you do. Okay? That's where the first bit where you want to stop things to go wrong. Okay? So, the challenge with CI CD in corporations like Vonage or other big corporations that grow up a lot and have a lot of the engineers working is, is the scale. Is you have the so called specialists. These guys are guys do all the CI CD, they know everything. And reality is, we, we need to think different. How can we actually accept collaboration from the outside? How can we say that a, a team can just go there and see the baseline and copy? and reproduce the build system. They can trial out, they can contribute, and that this business will make decisions. So businesses will make sense to a, a group of a, a stack to manage their own destiny, because they, they have the skill set and they have the space to do that. Some companies, it's not suitable. We won't develop, the rate of change on, on the main applications is so high that we actually want developers not to be worried about these things. We want this to be like your internet bill or your or auto build, commoditize, you just want people to be able to use this and that service without having to worry about the details. But regardless of the model you choose, there's a massive responsibility. One thing is a big pitfall on, on, in general, and you go to some of the interesting talks you can see uh, on YouTube about the transformation companies did on this space is about, there was a guy that knew everything, that kind of sentence, or only these five guys could touch this. That is dangerous, it doesn't scale, it causes friction. Okay? Everyone input is valid. Everyone input is valid, regardless of their experience and their background. Everyone ID is important. So, testability, as, as, as an automation person these days, I, I come from software engineering, I do love testing. I'm crazy about it. I'm crazy about test automation, exploratory testing. I love it. I love to sit with a guy or with a rubber duck. Uh, you guys know the rubber, rubber duck thing. And they try to explain to the rubber duck if this makes sense. And, or writing a documentation, oh, I missed that. Or even doing a demo to a team like I recently did, where, oh, that is wrong. Like zapping my entire system, clear all my details, and then just start over. It's very important that testability is considered all the time, because if you can't test a system, your system is, not, is going to be compromised a as sooner, as lot sooner than you think. This applies to everything. Let's do the same for CICD. So today, we talk about code, 
infrastructure as code, pipeline as, pipeline as code is a reality. Okay? This is very important. So let's not ignore that because we want to version anything or they trail anything. And code is critical for us. Because nothing beats like looking at commit and to see the change and the test that run and the output of those tests and what happened there. Or, the, or realizing that we missed something on the test suite and things failed. Let's write a test again. Let's cover that aspect. But treat, it, treat your pipeline, your, your stack as that if you're building components somewhere else to use, the pipeline is as important as those components. Because that pipeline is a component that that the other team uses as well. Okay? So, on a modern world, including Jenkins, don't disregard Jenkins. Jenkins is still alive. It's a great tool. It's having its own twists. Some people might like it. It's still a good tool. And it's a good task runner. I actually tease some of the guys on my team that are older than me. Yeah, Jenkins is really nice. Oh, is Jenkins CI? No, no. Jenkins is a task runner. CI is a a feature that comes with plugins. That's another discussion. That itself could be a talk. But the reality is, pipeline as code can be done on Jenkins as well, on any other system. Most systems that, that you saw there on that big cloud of brands are code-driven, all of them. And if you look at them, they are so similar. They look, they copy each other all the time. Most of them use Docker for everything. Even like when they want to tar a file, they use Docker container to do that. Everything is Docker driven. That's fine. Or Kubernetes instrument with Kubernetes or other type of orchestrator or custom orchestrator. So, on the modern world, pipelines are beautiful code. Or, or, a, or a known data format like YAML, like JSON, doesn't matter what you. Obviously, Jenkins used XML back in the day. Now they use other stuff. You don't want to see things like MS build. That is like XML nightmare, mind-blowing. You can't understand. But the reality is, when you write code as an engineer, you want your code to be expressive. You want humans to be able to read the code, to understand the code in a glimpse. You want people to understand, oh, this does this. This has this problem. This might not cover this aspect. You want your code to be expressive. So this is an example from Concourse CI. If you look at Travis, if you look to GitLab CI, if you look at Jenkins file and some of the stuff you can do with Groovy as well, hold on, Rui, this is all the same. Yes. Most of them are all the same. Some of them have different capabilities, different aspects you need to consider, different feature sets, but most of them are properly documented and they are code-driven. If it's code-driven, that means if I have 200 projects that are microservices that are run in Kubernetes and now I need to produce Elm charts for those projects, I can run a batch of my config and change all my config of that file on all that project and make it produce an Elm chart. I don't not need to go to ask teams, can you just move to Elm chart, please? And the guy asks, what the hell is an Elm chart? I have no idea what that is. That's okay. You can, if you operate on that scale of large quantity of services, you can actually operate with your teams and you don't change their life cycle and you don't disrupt them. Because syncing in new information is hard. You don't expect, if you're doing automation, to understand all the domain of your customer facing domain logic for your, your business. Neither an automation engineer knows everything about the business, neither a developer knows everything about automation. And that's okay. And that is okay. If people want to dive into two, it's cool. But it's not bad. Not necessarily. So, this is a reality, this is data. You can transform it. We can literally transform one to another easily. It's scalable, okay? Another advice before I, con I conclude is, don't try to be super smart and have custom pipelines for everything. If you deploy microservice to Kubernetes stack, for example, or ECS, and they are, they are basically either Python or .NET or Java, it doesn't matter what it is, and they just change messaging or do HTTP communication, they use databases, don't try to make all of them different, the way they are deployed, the way they are maintained, monitored. Try to be consistent. And front-ends included. Treat front-ends as units as well. So, conclusion. Consider your requirements, very important. Critical. That is like the first thing. That will narrow down your choices and allow you to make better informed choices. Because when you go to requirements, you dig up on that, you realize that might, the tool you use might be sufficient. 
and be, and you kind of say, oh, that shiny thing that just came, not necessarily need that. Cost licensing capabilities, all that kind of stuff, compliance aspects, where the vendor serves, if it's SaaS based, what, it, for example, if you operate on Azure, might not be a good idea to choose a vendor that only operates in AWS. Might not be a good idea. Might not be good. You might have latency aspects or other aspects you need to consider. Spike experiments. So basically, you narrow down your choices. You have a few, hopefully, three, four, five. Allow yourself some time to explore a bit more the details of those projects. The rate of change, the way they patch, other aspects of their life cycle and how they can fit your pipelines or, or the way you can make your pipelines work. So, and assume things will change. You need to assume things will change variably. You don't have a choice. It, what is today great, tomorrow doesn't work. And you need to adapt again. And your decisions you did yesterday will impact the ability you have to adapt today. And that is for anything in business, in code, and these systems. So assume things will change, template everything. So on UVS Media, we have an approach now with microservices. If we want to change the pipelines from microservice to Jenkins to something else, we, de we don't rely on Jenkins to do it. We can actually swap. If we have a new stack, we actually can produce a configuration to another system with the batch operation because it's data-driven, config-driven. Build with security in mind from day one. Remember, CI, CD is the entry point for your security of your company because you're building artifacts going to be produced, deployed to, to a production cloud environment where data, customer data is. So the way we manage your keys, the way you test your environments, the way you build, you store your artifacts, all those details are critical. And based on how you are regulated, GDPR, all that stuff, SOC, anything that, or HIPAA, whatever that your space, your company operates, critically think about that at the start. And regardless of what you do, software as a base or infrastructure, because it's, CICD is still something that sometimes makes sense to be on-premise, obviously on-premise on the cloud, okay? When we say on-prem these days, for most of us is, we have our own infrastructure runs on our own cloud space, we on AWS, on our infrastructure we manage. But regardless, avoid snowflakes at all costs because that doesn't scale. Your business will change or it's changing already super fast and you can't just cope with having to maintain things manually. It doesn't work that way. So treat pipelines as the big takeaway I would like to leave with you guys is treat pipeline as code and CICD as your code. It's a craft, let's make it right. It doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to be good enough for what needs to deliver. And, and we can aim for perfection. I, have, I work with a guy that has agreed, always tells me this all the time. We aim for perfection. We, might, we know we don't get it most of the time, but it, we have a direction where we want to be, and that kind of allows us to make some decisions that probably we wouldn't make it the right way if we didn't see the end goal. So this is my conclusion around CICD. This is what stop us, businesses, to deliver fast and get quick feedback. From the idea to code to customer feedback. Make th that cycle short as short as possible. And on a new voice media, Vonage, most teams, they can get code to production, all regions, all clouds in three hours. And that's where we want to be. Can I do that in two, two hours, one hour? Maybe. I don't need that. We have other, other big fish, fish, bigger fish to fry. But that's the goal, get feedback super quick and reduce, reduce friction from teams so they can actually build what is the value of the business, which is proposition to get stuff out to the customer and get feedback. And if it doesn't work, we trash it because it didn't cost that much to get there. That's it. That's my presentation. Thank you.